Well, welcome, Michael. Glad to be here, David. Well, for starters, I think this is the longest title you've ever reviewed. <laughs> I am suspicious of long titles. Um, it often appears that the author uh, can't make up his mind. Uh, this one is also an older title. The book was published in 2004, became a bestseller, and is now out in paperback. I usually review the new titles, but I guess I missed this one the first time around. So was it worth waiting for? Well, it's an enjoyable and easy read. The author writes for The New Yorker and has that engaging magazine writer style about him. Uh, I was also intrigued by the, the subject or the title, The Wisdom of Crowds, because I've always been more worried about the madness of crowds, the herd mentality, or even mob psychology. So you think the crowd or, or mob is uh, somewhat dangerous, and the author thinks there was, so there's not a lot to agree on there. Uh, no, no, there isn't. Um, <laughs> when he calls it the wisdom of crowds in his title, but, but I'd say it's more about the aggregation of information in groups. I mean, his argument is that group decisions are usually better than a decision made by any single member of the group, even the smartest one. But he puts so many conditions of what, a proper group is, uh, it really doesn't have anything to do with crowds. It requires a perfect assembly of people working in perfect conditions. Uh, there's a theory there which is interesting, but I'm not sure it goes uh, much farther than the law of averages. So what's the difference between an unruly mob and a wise crowd. Um, even having read the book, I'm not sure I know. Um, what was the wisdom of the crowd that bought tech stocks in 1990, for instance, or, 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 you know, or the collateralized debt obligations in 2006. Both turned out to be bubbles, and, and the wise crowd got uh, badly burned. You know, as I mentioned, the, the author has a lengthy list of conditions that, that creates a, a wise crowd as opposed to an emotional mob or crazed investors. I, I'll, I'll give you, here, here's what his conditions are. Diversity of opinion independence, decentralization, and aggregation. In other words, you need the right people, different enough, independent thought, decentralized control, and then some way to turn private judgment into a collective decision. Is that a wise crowd? I'm not sure. So does that happen in the real world? Occasionally it does, I guess. I, I think his point is to, to point out that, that these perfect conditions, if you create them, you get better decision making and you should try to create those conditions more often. Uh, okay, we're getting pretty theoretical I'm here. So. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so what's the book like to read? Well, the, uh, the, the author's a magazine writer and, and the book is like reading one magazine article after another. Every section of every chapter begins with a, a news story or a hook, as the writers call them, a good lead. And, and sometimes there's, there's insight in the interpretation of these news leads, and they're engaging enough to read, but then he has to form it and shape it and, and try to make it fit into this theory of his about crowds, just the right kind of crowds, as I mentioned. Um, I don't know. I like the stories better than I like the theories. So the book came out in 2004. It did. What's, what's come out since then that's either accepted or disproved his theories? Well, uh, good point. You know, I, there's been some books that we've talked about right here, David. You know, I, I think, for instance, of Don Tapscott's book, Wikonomics, which is about the huge and successful collaboration that can take place online. That, that's a better book. And then this one, of course, uh, Super Crunchers, uh, Ian Ayers, uh, it goes in the direction of exploring database decision-making rather than, you know, crowd group dynamics. It's a better book, too. I, I think they both show how much the world has changed since 2004, which is pretty amazing. So you don't completely accept a theory, but you like the book. Uh, correct. I, I like the stories in the book that he used to support his alleged theory. Uh, there's some good reporting and writing here. Um, he has an account of the uh, decisions that were made leading up to the Columbia space shuttle disaster. And that, that's good reporting. I just think it, it stretches it to, to try to put it into this overriding theory that he says can shape business, economics, societies, and nations. Okay, so the final verdict, thumbs up, thumbs down. Well, one of each. Uh, one up for his abilities as a magazine writer and journalist, and one down for his social science. Good stuff, Michael. Thanks as always. My pleasure.